How are you thinking about some of the inflationary, reflationary trends that are underway? Well, for one thing, I'd make a pretty big distinction between reflationary trends and inflationary trends. I think of reflation as more cyclical and more responsive to some of the contractionary economic moments of last year. Uh, and I think that you see a lot of that in commodity prices that have had a big move up, but that big move up was mostly kind of restoring their price level from pre-pandemic. Inflationary trends I think of as more secular, and we're in the camp that simply doesn't believe that this big boost in money supply is actually inflationary up against the debt deflationary mm. Japanification issues that the United States economy is fighting, that we have seen now decade after decade of growing debt, growing government spending, putting a deflationary pressure down on the economy. I think the Fed would love for there to be inflation. Mm -hmm. I, my issue is not that I think they're going to avoid it or work around it or manage it. I just don't think they can create it. You know, you mentioned the Japanification, and I'm curious how that folds into your yield analysis at a 175 do yields no longer rise? Is the worst of that sell-off behind us? I, I don't know that uh, we don't get to a two-handle, but even a 2% tenure is pitiful for an economy that has had the historic growth rates, real GDP growth rates that ours has had. And so I don't believe 175 points to inflation. I think it points to a successful vaccine rollout. It points to an economy opening up again. It points to freedom coming back across uh, the country. So to me, I think that there is a pricing in the bond market of greater conditions than we had last year, yeah. but not inflationary conditions. Let's talk about the pricing in the equity market and the rotation that we've been seeing here. We're closing out the quarter here. On this day, we're seeing technology rally and rally hard. But when you go back over the past month and really almost this quarter, I mean, technology has been a laggard, a big time here, something that we haven't seen in quite some time. We've also seen sort of a splintering off here of performance uh, among the headline indices, indices, whether you're looking at the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell, whatever it is here. What does this type of price action, this type of rotation tell us, David? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really great point. It's, it's uh, fascinating how many days this quarter have seen big up days in the Dow and down days in the NASDAQ, and even a couple of days that are vice versa, today being one where the Dow sort of flat and the NASDAQ's having a meaningful move higher. Um, but no, the overall trend, it's very clear that you have right now a bifurcation in the market where the big winners and loved things that had momentum of last year are, are the laggards right now. And even with this big run today, the Nasdaq's still about a thousand points off of its uh, mid-February highs. Um, our belief is that we're in early innings of what will be a very secular, very powerful rotation. And whether you want to call that the growth to value rotation or the momentum to quality, there's a bit of all of those things that applies. But I mostly just look at it from a contrarian standpoint. It's all the things that were loved to all the things that were formerly not loved. I love that. That's a great quote. <laughs> I'll take it from there, David, as Romaine loves the good quotes that you have. Talk to us more about that. Is it growth to value? Is it into momentum? Or is it from big to small? There's a little bit of all of that going on. I think the move into small cap has probably run its course to some degree. You're getting to a point now where about 50% of the companies in the Russell 2000 are uh, money losers, okay, negative EBITDA. And, and it's really hard for this Russell 2000 run to continue without becoming really overly stretched. Now, we like small cap. We just wouldn't like it at an index level. We'd only like it selectively active with a focus on quality. But you know what it started off as it was uh, almost a rotation from technology into energy and financials. So it wasn't all growth into all value. It was sector specific. And I have to see more follow up in utilities, consumer staples and REITs for me to think that it's yeah. the broad value catch up. I just think energy and financials were so woefully undervalued at the bottom of the post COVID moment that uh, they were due for a big pickup. And now you've had a quarter right. for the ages in our beloved energy sector. All right, David, always great to uh, get your thoughts here. David Bonson, chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. We want to thank him for his time.